Hey Crafty Family, it's me! And today we are going to talk all about texture. Because we like some texture. So I'm sure you're wondering what the hell is all this on my desk? This is all texture. Well, it's not all texture. You can make other texture. But this is the kind of texture we are going to talk about today. And it's the kind of texture that you create using a variety of mediums. And now obviously you do not need all of these mediums. You can make lots of texture with just one. But I just happen to have a lot that I've collected over the years. Whether it be from, you know, buying them here and there. I, did, I got stuff from the Deco Arts Helping Artist Program. Um, the creative reuse I got a bunch of stuff at so you know I collected over time a lot of different ways to make texture because I love doing mixed media so that's what I do I am a texture junkie so the most common things for making texture are heavy gesso and modeling paste or texture paste um, or sometimes it's called embossing paste and I have several of those. This is a homemade version, which I'm not even going to open this because I think it needs to be stirred really well. But I wanted to get it out to show you that. And we are going to make um, homemade texture paste in the next video, in the part two. We are going to make our own homemade texture paste. But for now, we're going to talk about store-bought kind. So they call it modeling paste, embossing paste, texture paste. It's called a lot of things. Um, but right now, I'm gonna, we're going to work with the white for a second. And we're going to use the paste. Okay, so there's three different kinds. They also have like, when it comes to like texture paste or modeling paste, they'll call it um, heavy or light modeling paste. And that just means the density of it. So some of them are real thick like spackle. Like heavy and thick like a plaster like a spackle and others are light and fluffier like um, like this one would be a light texture paste because it's more like a like a whip well not this one because this one's drying up a little bit probably not a good thing um, but it's more like a whipped um, frosting I guess you can call it um, let me get the one that's not dying this one here is the newer one See how it's kind of light and fluffy and it just comes right out and it's very light and fluffy? Yeah, that's that's considered a light modeling paste. Or in this case, it's called an embossing paste. Um, and then there's more. This one I think is a little heavier than that one. This one's a little denser. It's a little it's a little denser. It's not quite as light and fluffy as that one. You have to kind of feel them to know. People like them for different reasons. Um, they both work pretty much the same, but um, I personally like the light, fluffy stuff the best. Just my opinion. Um, but honestly, it you know it just kind of depends on what you want to do. Um, if you're going to put a lot of embellishments into it then you want to use the heavy stuff. This is considered probably medium, not even really heavy. There's heavier out there. But you can use it through a stencil as most texture pastes go. So here's this one through a stencil. And this is the Deco Art Media Modeling Paste. Um, and then here's the Deco Art Dimensional Effects, which is texture paste, but not much different than the modeling paste that I just used. It really isn't. They both, you know, are going to look the same when I pull the stencil up. They both basically do the same thing. It really just comes down to preference. I mean, on what brand you like. To me, I've been doing this a long time. I buy the cheapest one if I'm going to buy it and or... I find one that's a nice light and this one is not like super cheap but it's pretty cheap it's not real expensive the the Dreamweaver I just like it I like the way it goes on I like the way it works so this is that's one of my favorites is the Dreamweaver it's hard to find sometimes but if you go to blitzy.com they have the Dreamweaver and that's one of my favorites so I kind of mixed three different ones here 
of all the basically the same thing. Um, so any one that you get is going to be fine. You're not going to have an issue with. And as you can see, they all do great. They hold some texture. And when this dries, when you feel it, when it's dry, it's going to be nice and textured feeling. And that's basically the point of that. So uh, let me clean my stencil quick. And then we can move on. That's the basics of regular white, you know, texture paste slash modeling paste. That's the basics on that. You can make texture with them in many ways. You can use, like I just showed you, through a stencil. You can make, make texture also um, just by drip water on my page that's okay you can make you can also make uh, texture just by taking it on your palette knife and going like this and just kind of leaving it all leaving it all textury on your page just to give some added texture when that dries it'll give like a really cool texture that's one way another way to do that you can put it on like you could put like a, a smoother kind of coat over top of a um, over top of a canvas or something with like a credit card if you want like a smoother, wider kind of. And you can do different things and put little, you know, different little textures into it. You can do that, and then you can which will give it texture. So you could do several things to get yourself some decent texture in your background. And I advise you to try all of them. You know, try different things with it. It's a lot of fun. You can also take, um, let me find a stamp real quick. You can also, I just grabbed a stamp. Um, you can also take it, it's hard for me to get my credit card in there. It's a little bowl, a little pot. So let me get some out onto my card. work with me there we go you can also put it on a little thicker which put it on a little thicker and then you can stamp into it like so and get impressions that way so there's a gazillion things that you can do to get a variety of kind of textured um, looks with your texture pastes and modeling pastes and such. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Just make sure anything you use it on, whether it be a stamp um, or a, a, a stencil, you want to make sure you clean it right away because it will pretty much ruin your stencil or your whatever you use you know because it will dry on there so that's the basics of like a standard white you know um, texture paste and then we have things like sand paste which this one needs a little bit of a stir this one's called sand paste and what this is, it's a grittier texture. Great for like grunge looks and things like that. And what this is, is basically just texture paste with sand in it. Little sand, very fine sand. And it's, it's going to be almost impossible to see it. But when it, you can hear it, listen. Hear that? That's the sand. And that is a great for giving like really cool like if you have a if you're doing like a beach scene this would be a great one to put on and then you know let it dry and it'll feel like a sandy kind of texture but it is very you know it's got that gritty sandy texture you can use that all the same ways you can use the other one no different 
It'll just have a different feel when you touch it. It's not going to be as smooth feeling as these are. Even though these will have texture, they'll still feel the texture paste itself will feel kind of smooth. Whereas this will feel quite gritty. And then there is um, also things like this graphite. It's texture paste, but it again has a gritty feel to it with some, and it's like a gray, and it's called graphite, and it's by Art Extravagance uh, Prima Finibar. So this stuff here is awesome because it's got a little bit of a glitter to it. It's very much more, much more coarse than the sand paste. It's very coarse, but it dries with a really cool texture and it's a lot of fun to play with. That one's a lot of fun. And then there's things like um, these gloss gels which dry, like these are all going to dry white. These white ones are going to dry white. This one's going to dry gray. And then there's also um, black modeling paste as well, which will dry black, obviously, which I haven't even opened this one yet. But it's basically the same as the white, except and you can use it through a stencil, but it's going to dry black. And so I'm not sure you can see that with the black on the black like that, but that's what that one will do. So... That's the nice thing about that, is if you want to use that and want to have it to be black, you can do that. Then we've got gloss gel, which is, it looks white, it looks like modeling paste, but it's, it's much lighter. And here, let me do it through a stencil. It's a bit lighter and fluffier. And the cool thing about this is it dries completely clear. So, when this dries, it'll be clear and shiny, and so it'll give like a really cool effect, and that'll all be clear and shiny, so it just looks really cool. I love 3D gloss gel, it's one of my favorites because of that, so when that dries, it's gonna look really cool so these are all the different texture pastes and actually there's more than that um, and I probably have more somewhere I mean there are tons of different kinds there's what's called paper paste and it's got like torn up paper in it there's all kinds of different texture paste you can make your own you could take some regular texture paste you can add micro beads and make a little micro bead paste you know what I mean so there's a lot of things you can add into your add into your um, your modeling paste to make really cool texture which is a lot of fun like uh, tons of fun I love playing with different texture you can get this stuff at the craft store it's called snow Tex, and this it's meant to make like it's meant for like making every making something look like it's got snow on it but this too has a really cool kind of gritty texture to it that just looks really cool when you put when you put it down it has like a very gritty esque texture and it dries white and it's just a really cool kind of paste and i love playing with that as well so i mean it's just there's different you know texture feelings i can't explain it i don't know how to explain that when you feel it, it has different feelings each one has a different you know coarse you know whether it's smooth or coarse or whatever but it's really cool to have then you can also use heavy gesso and heavy structure gel which this one here i'm not even sure i got this at the um creative reuse a while back and let me make sure that it's still good because <laughs> i don't even check sometimes and i take yeah it is it's still fine um, and this uh, heavy structure gel, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I do know that you can use it like a texture paste. I'm not sure if it's like, um, I don't know if it dries clear or not because I haven't played with this one. I got it, I think the last time or a couple times ago when I went to the creative reuse and I don't know much about it. Um, 
but it, it when I looked at it, it reminded me of kind of like that clear gloss gel, except maybe a little bit thinner, but I know it's not cheap, so it's not something I would go to, you know, unless I found it at a creative reuse, but it acts the same, so I'll read the bottle. That's probably the smartest thing to do, don't you think? I probably should have done that before I started filming. <laughs> but you know, it's me we're talking about here. Let's see. It's hard to read. Uh, heavy structure with strong peak retention, retention mixed with acrylic color to increase transparency. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm assuming it dries clear. Yeah, it's got to dry clear. So this is kind of like the 3D gloss gel. This is going to be similar to the gloss gel, which is right here by Art Basics. This is also Finnabar. Love that stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of Finnabar products. Their mediums are awesome. Um, I can't always afford them, but they're awesome. And then you can also use heavy gesso. Heavy gesso will dry white. It's not going to dry clear because it's gesso. And again, it's like a light modeling paste. That's another reason I love heavy gesso. Or um, yep, yeah. Well, it's heavy gesso, but it's a it's a. What I mean by heavy gesso is it's kind of like a light modeling paste, if that makes sense. But you can use it like gesso on it. You can use it just like just regular gesso with a brush. You know what I mean? So you can use it either way. You can use it with a brush. As, and paint it on like regular gesso or you can use it like this which my stencils warped over here I should have used this side it's the fault of my st my stencil and my stupidity not the not the, the gesso that did that but it is thinner and it will you know it is a little thinner and a little bit runnier than and my knife is falling apart so it is a little bit, you know, a little bit thinner than thicker paste, but you can still get really good texture out of it. It's just this side, I warped it by accident with my heat gun a while back because <laughs> I'm an idiot. And I was using that side when I should have been using that side. See, I got better results. So there you go. You've got heavy gesso, which will also do the job for your it's, it's like a dual job. It'll work as your gesso and then it'll work as your texture. So that's something to think about if you're trying to save some money and you wanna buy something from the store, you know, you wanna buy some gesso and modeling paste, you might wanna look into getting heavy gesso. That's definitely an option. Cause you know, we're trying to, you know, we all are trying to save money um, and I try to do my best to help you save money, but I'm showing you store-bought products today. And then t um, in the next video, we are, yeah, see, it's all warped right here. I screwed this one up by accidentally shoving my lovely heat gun on that. And then in the next video, we are going to sh um, actually make our own texture paste. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to make easy texture paste with stuff you probably already have at home we're gonna do that but we're still not done now we've still got some more ways to make some texture let's say you don't want white texture paste where is it let's get some modeling paste let's say you don't want white modeling paste well what can you make do to make it colored you can mix it with a lot of different things actually you can mix it with your gelatos or your other um, water soluble crayon type things so all you do to do that is take a sliver of your gelato take some of your modeling paste and do a little magic mixing together. Just chop it up a little. My palette knife is on the fritz. It's about to fall apart. I need more, I need a better palette knife. <laughs> I have better ones, but I like this one. I like the shape of it. So you just take a few minutes to mix this together. 
And as you can see, a little gelato goes a long way. And then you've got a really nice creamy, a really nice creamy texture paste that will work beautifully through a stencil. Mm -mm, there it is. I was looking for the stencil. Let's make sure I'm on the right side of the stencil. <laughs> this will work beautiful through a stencil. Just like that and we'll dry just like that nice and metallic I'll even keep going with it over here beautiful that's one way to mix paint or mix a uh, color into your into your uh, modeling paste or texture paste and you can mix it into any one. You can mix it into the sand paste, into the gloss gel. Now keep in mind, if you mix it into the 3D gloss gel or any of the transparent ones, it's obviously going to turn that color and not be transparent. It might be shiny, but it's not gonna be, you know, as transparent or, you know, dry as clear, obviously. I'm cleaning that off pretty anally just because I don't want it to even dry a little bit on there. Okay. Then you can also color your gel or, or your, sorry, your texture based with a little paint. So if you have, whether it's craft paint, like I'll just use craft paint. Now keep in mind the white is going to change color a bit it's because it's like you know there's obviously white paint in here so it might change color a bit it's not doing as much here it's actually doing pretty good but sometimes it can it can alter the color a little bit and pastel it out a little so you got to keep that in mind when you mix it with certain texture pastes I think I put enough paint where it didn't change the color. But again, now the paint is a little thicker. Now I can use it um, as a now I can use it through a stencil and get pretty decent results with it. Like so. So you can color it with paint. You could color it with gelatos. You can even color it with your mica powders, things like that. Any of your um, pigment powders. You don't have to use it through a stencil, obviously. You can just put it on and get your texture that way. You know, use it as a texture base, like a color texture base. Obviously, I'm just showing you through a stencil with these just because that's the most common way that it's, you know, used a lot of times is with a stencil. But you can do so many things where, you know, you're not, you don't have to, you're not limited to just a stencil. So texture paste is a load of fun. And even gesso, even your heavy gesso, you can, you can even tint that with your paint or your gelato so you can absolutely change the color of the what's nice about the gelato is um it doesn't thin out the gesso or the modeling paste so if you're going to color a um a heavy gesso because it's not quite as dense and thick as a modeling paste you might want to use something like a gelato or something because it will keep it from thinning it out too much whereas if you use a paint and you take the paint and try to take some heavy gesso and thin it out it's going to thin out the gesso further do you know what i mean so it's not you know and and i mean even though heavy gesso is pretty thick it can thin out 
a little easier than things like embossing paste, texture paste, modeling paste type of things. So you want to keep that in mind when you are mixing your things, um, mixing your various colors into your various pastes. The other thing you can use to get some texture is things like metallic lusters or Inca golds or any of these type of color pastes. And I know that Nuvo, that company Nuvo, the stuff that makes these things, the Nuvo dots, I only have this color, um, but the Nuvo drops or whatever. So they have a brand that's like, they call it a mousse. And so they have all different colors, just like these, the metallic lusters come in all different colors. So does the Inca gold. It just depends on what your, you know, what your preference is. I, I'm happy with these, but I do like the colors that the Nuvo has because they have a little bit of a different color base, a color palette than these do. Um, and I really, really like the colors that they come in. But you could do just like texture paste, you could take it, let me make sure I'm using the right flat side. You could take it through your stencil. And in most cases, like it, it's a little bit thicker than your texture paste sometimes. I'm not gonna do a whole lot, but you see what I mean. You could do that. These are also great for using as a rub. So you could take some on your finger and rub it across. They're nice and metallic. They have a really nice shine to them. And after they're dry, if you take a cloth and buff them, they get even shinier. So real nice these are to use. I really enjoy using those. And they're great for adding a little extra color and shine and texture to whatever you want to add that to. And also, they also sometimes make, speaking of mousse, because like I was saying, that company Nuvo makes the mousse. There's also things like by this company, which I've tested these out before, Marabou, and they're called acrylic mousse. And these are basically a texture paste. They've got a little bit of a grit to them. So they're a little like on the gritty side, but these are real nice as well for making texture. So there's just so many options out there. It's insane how much there is to making, you know, the texture that you want to make. It's crazy. It's it's absolutely crazy how much there is to pick from. There's so many different things. But I'll tell you one thing. My go-to thing is usually just a white modeling paste because you can you can change the color yourself. You know what I mean? You can, you can, you can tint it or dye it or whatever. You could do it all yourself and it's cheaper and just a homemade one is perfect for that because, you know, you don't have to buy these expensive because yes, they can be pricey. I mean, they are not cheap. I mean, just this bottle right on here, it says it's $9.49. This thing here, which is a nice big tub, I will give it that. It's 500 mils or 17 fluid ounces. This here was like $10, $12. That's a that's a pretty good price. You know, that's not, I don't think that that's too expensive for this. This is a, this is a big pot of gesso. So I don't think that that's very expensive, but some of the other ones can be pricey, especially when you're buying like golden brand or this brand that brand they could be pricey um so shop around definitely if you're gonna buy store-bought definitely shop around um but honestly it some of my favorites store-bought as far as the gesso is definitely the finnabar art basics which is by prima um definitely the art basics again the gloss gel and the texture graphite paste. Love all of, I love Finnabar. My favorite modeling paste is the Dreamweaver embossing paste, but this one's, this one they sell at Blitzy. Um, I think it was about 10 or $12 for this, which compared to this, it's a, it's a smaller thing, but I really love this stuff. Um, I also like the Deco Art line of texture paste and modeling paste, which to me they're, pretty much the same thing. Um, I really like these as well. So 
Um, yeah, I haven't really had anything to complain about with any of them, to be quite honest. They're, they'll pretty, any of them will pretty much do the job. I even have some, uh, what do I have? Like Liquitex maybe? I have a tub of Liquitex modeling paste as well. So, I mean, I just don't know what I did with it. It's somewhere. So you can't go wrong. You'll, you know, you're going to find that's pretty much anything will work. You can even use spackle from the hardware store. It might take a little longer to dry and sometimes it can crack if you use it too thick. But, you know, if you're just using it for thin applications, spackles, you know, will work fine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it'll make texture. And you can also use, uh, you can mix up some Plaster of Paris, which Plaster of Paris is cheap. You can use that as well. That does have a tendency to crack if you make it too thick as well. So just keep that in mind. But as long as you're doing things on a thin basis, I mean, like these will dry pretty flexible when I do this with the paper. But Plaster of Paris will crack when you do this. And so will spackle. So keep that in mind. A lot of the stuff that's meant to be... You know, obviously spackle is not an art product and neither, you know, and Plaster of Paris is, but it's not really meant for this. So the ones that are meant for it, like the modeling paste and stuff, are usually quite flexible. So if you happen to bend the page a little bit, it's not going to completely crack. Um, it's not true of all of them, but for the most part, they don't crack. You can also use heavy body acrylic paint um, just by taking some on your palette knife and... A lot of times, I'm not even sure if this is the right one, but a lot of times you can use acrylic paint as well as a texture base. So any heavy bodied acrylic um, paint will work great. So that's another option. Get taking the rest of the paint and dipping it there off the stencil um, just so I don't waste it because I'm going to use this sheet you know you guys know I will <laughs> I'm not going to waste this <laughs> but um, so that look at my hand <laughs> that's from the stencil so these are great ways to make texture on your products don't be afraid to use up your you know i know the i don't know this is grumbacher i don't know how expensive it is i never buy tube paints unless i get them at the creative reuse so i'm not like uh you know what i mean so i'm not like a snobby paint person so don't think that but i got it at the creative reuse it's a thick paint it works good for texture you know i'm not a fine artist i don't ever claim to be you know so i use that stuff for whatever but if you have some lying around, some heavy, um, heavy bodied paint, then you can use it as your texture paste as well. So that's, um, I think I've covered everything in this video as far as pastes go and textures go. Um, the next video that I'm going to show you, that will be part two, We'll be talking about how to make your own texture paste that you can use through stencils and how everything how we showed here. You can color it. You can do anything to it. So that's going to be the next video. I just wanted to touch on, and I know that there's tons of other texture mediums out there that I probably didn't cover, which is fine. But I just wanted you to get, for especially for the beginners that watch me, because I know that I have a lot of beginners in mixed media who like to watch my channel. And I wanted to touch on the different ways to make texture. Because I get asked a lot in emails and in messages about different things to use to make textures. And, you know, what they can be used for. And, oh, I have this stuff. Like somebody said to me, I have this such and such. I don't remember what it was. Let's just say heavy structure gel. What, you know, I got it from my local creative reuse or somebody gave it to me. What can I do with it? Well, if it's thick and you can put it on with a palette knife, guess what? You could probably use it for texture paste. I mean, that's just the way it is. As long as it's thick and it's some sort of a acrylic medium of some sort like these are, then yeah, you could totally use it.
as a texture. This is all different types of stuff that, you know, some of it's not even meant to be a texture paste and that's what I use it for. So you could totally go for it. Just have fun with it. I love the graphite one. That one dries really cool. Like if you're doing grungy, cool things, that one's a must have if you like to do grungy type stuff. I love it. I'm in love with the the art the finibar uh prima finibar i have no idea what it if it, which is the model which is the name because it's finibar art basics heavy gesso by prima i have no idea which one is the the right name to call it but i love the line that they have oh and also i almost forgot oh and you know what i forgot about this too here's another texture lux this is another one another company by faber castell and here's a colored texture uh, paste, which they have these all over the place. Like I said, there's so many things. That is a metallic gold texture paste. So there's just so many options to choose from. The other thing that I forgot to mention, till just now, typical, they also sell, Finabar has come out with these um, different waxes. Now these are different than these acrylic based things. These are wax based. I've showed these before. I absolutely love them. They are pricey and you only get a little amount. They're more fun for, they're more work more for putting as a rub. You see they look white, but it's very, very pearly and it turns out very metallic purple. I don't know how well you can see that. And they smell Oh, they smell so good. I love these. They'll also melt. So if you take it with your palette knife. So these are a lot of fun. And they have different colors, different styles. This is more of a metallic. This is more of like the opal. It's called Opal Magic. And then there's Antique Brilliance where the color looks very antique-y looking. Um, which my hand still has gold on it. So it gives it kind of a cool look. And then there's obviously the gold. The cool thing about these is they're not acrylic based, they're wax based, like I said. But if you were to take it with a palette knife and go through a stencil or just throw some, not even go through a stencil because you wouldn't want to do that really. I mean, you could if you were just going to let it dry. But if you wanted to, like you could put it, clump it onto parts of your project and then hit it with the heat gun and it'll run and melt which is the cool part about these, which is why I love these so much, because they're just a different thing, because they're not like your other mediums. You know what I mean? They're different. They're definitely different than your, than your acrylic mediums. And I love them for that reason. They're one of my favorite things. But then again, I am a sucker for the uh, Prima Art Finabar. That's what all that wax was. That's what these are. I love the lines of those. They, they're they just awesome and exciting and new and different. And I really like those products. But you don't need them, obviously, to make texture. I wouldn't start out with that. If you're just starting out in mixed media, you really only need two things to um, in your arsenal and you can make both of them at home. Gesso and texture paste. And you can make both of them at home on the cheap. Now I've already showed, I'll put a link below to my DIY gesso, um, my DIY gesso uh, video that I made, which makes this gesso here, which I'll show you. It's a fairly thick gesso. I don't know if it would go through a stencil very well. What did I do with my palette knife? Here it is. I'm not sure it would go through my stencil super well. We could try it. I just, it might be a little thin. But this is my DIY gesso. Yeah, it's not meant for like stencil use. It's meant for like painting it on, you know, but it does work. It will give you some texture. So yes, you can use it and it's, it's made, I, I make it at home and you can make it too. I'm sure some of you have seen that video and have made it. But if not, if you haven't seen the video, I'll link it below or I'll try to remember to put a little I card in the, if I can remember. If not, it will be linked below. But you can make your own gesso, which is awesome. And um, you can make your own texture paste, which is going to be the next video. So you have those options. 
and you can color them whatever colors you want like we discussed before just like you can color any of these store-bought kind you can color those so I hope this helped um, kind of explain different textures and different things you can do with textures we're going to play at the end of my videos because I've got a couple more videos on texture we're gonna play around with some further texture um, maybe we'll do some of that tomorrow after we make our texture paste I can show you some other things you could do with your texture paste so I hope for now that you enjoyed this video and I will put a link um, that's going to pop up around at the end of the video, uh, hopefully to the part two. And if not, it'll be also in the description. So go to part two and check out, um, how to make your own texture paste. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button. And also if you want to get notifications of when I go live, cause I do live streams twice a week, sometimes three or four times a week, depending on my mood, um, or just want to find out when the new videos come out, the bell icon, the little icon that's right next to the subscribe button, that little bell, if you click on it, it'll, you know, it'll help you. You could just click a box and then you'll get email notifications. And it's only when I have videos out, which is a couple times a week. So it's not like it's going to bombard you with too many emails. Um, also, uh, I have a Facebook group. It's called the Pink Poodle Pack Creative Playground. I will link that down below as well. Check out all the links I've got in the description. There'll be a lot of good stuff down there. I'm also going to put some links to where you can buy some um, texture paste slash modeling paste and heavy gesso. I'm going to put some links below to where you can get a couple of things if you're interested in buying um, a few store-bought brand, um, brand name texture and stuff like that texture pastes and whatnot so I'll put some links below to some products um, to get you started if you're interested in buying them um, I'm trying to think is there anything else I don't think so I think I covered everything <laughs> make sure you give this video a thumbs up I hope you guys have a great week I hope this helped you out helped you out if you have any questions whatsoever please leave them in the comment and I will answer them to the best of my ability also in the comments if you wouldn't mind tell me what's your favorite brand or type like what do you like to use for texture do you like using gesso do you like using structure gels do you like using you know sand paste or homemade texture paste like what do you use what's your go-to texture medium i would love to know in the comments what you know get some ideas from you guys and find out what you like as far as that goes so anyway have a great week make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people and i will see you in part two part two bye bye